Here is an abbreviated summary of our sun's life cycle. So once our sun started stably fusing hydrogen into helium, and hydrostatic equilibrium was maintained so that the pressure coming out from the core is exactly balanced out by the gravitational pressure uh, pulling in from all the mass. This is what we call the main sequence stage. Hydrogen becomes helium, all is well, planets can go around the sun, life can form, the sun's output is reasonably constant. The core of the sun, these circles are not to scale, is about the size of the Earth. To put in context, it takes there, if you consider the whole diameter of the sun, you can fit 109 Earths across the entire diameter of the sun. So this again, not to scale, all of the sunlight that is created, all the photons that are created from the fusion, are being produced in a region that is less than a hundredth the width of the entire sun. So that's where the stable fusion reaction is taking place. It is not the entire sun, it is just in the core. And what happens when those photons are produced, so you form the little gamma ray photons, they don't come out immediately. They zigzag around. They do what we call this thing called a random walk. This is the technical term that physicists and astronomers, astronomers use. So these photons bounce around off of all the atoms of stuff that are present in the layers of the sun that are not the core, most of the layers. There's also, we're pretty sure, these convection layers in the sun. So you get this convection happening as well, this churning of the materials in the sun. But for the most part, the hydrogen that's become helium, that's all pretty much contained in the core, that region that is less than a hundredth the width of the whole sun. Interestingly, it takes a photon about 5,000 years from when it is produced by fusion in the core to reach the surface, the surface of the sun, and then travel unimpeded until it hits the Earth. So sunlight, sunlight is produced in the core. It takes 5,000 years to get to the surface, and then travels unimpeded in space and hits either us or creatures far away from our solar system that are observing our star. And you might think, well, doesn't light travel at the speed of light? Yes, but this whole random walk is the result of the photons scattering off of all the atoms of stuff, exciting things and de-exciting um, within the interiors of the sun. So in some sense, it is traveling an equivalent distance that it would travel unimpeded for 5,000 years. That's a, a topic for another video. But again, the random walk. So those photons that are produced take a long time to, to leave, and they're produced in this tiny region in the center. The sun's going to do this for about 9 billion years. And then what will happen is, again, this core, we're going to keep the same scale. It's less than 100 the width of the sun, um, but the, the makeup of it will change. So you'll have some hydrogen still going to helium, but what you'll also get, maybe you get some helium that will start becoming carbon. And that's because you'll have maybe the hydrogen fusion is going to go down, but the gravitational pressure then, because the hydrogen fusion went down, gravitational pressure will be greater than what's being produced by the fusion. And if that happens, the star, the overall size of our sun might collapse a little bit. And then as it collapses down, you can take those three helium nuclei, not helium three, but three of the, the alpha particles, and maybe compress them into carbon-12. That has to happen at higher temperatures because the normal fusion chain, you get four of the protons becoming 
helium-4, that's just four single positive charges that need to stick together, whereas for three helium nuclei, that's three doubly positive charges that you got to combine together. It's more electric charge you're trying to overcome the electric repulsion. So sun will slightly condense down, maybe triggering some helium fusion. And then when that helium fuses, more energy is going to be released. Hydrogen might still be becoming helium here, but then the helium is actually going to stop turning into carbon briefly. And so what happens is the pressure coming out of the core actually becomes greater than the gravitational pressure that is pulling in. And it actually causes the star to, our sun, to expand out. And so you get this expansion. And then since you had the temperatures drop because of this expansion, you're going to get some helium forming into carbon again, because as it expands out, then the temperature of the core goes down again. Fusion slows down overall, and the gravitational collapse then becomes greater than the pressure from the fusion reactions. And so this cycle starts to repeat itself a bunch of times. This is the pulsating variable phase. There's many different estimates about when this is going to happen in the sun's future, about four-ish billion years from now, maybe five billion, not sure, and how long this phase lasts. Again, we don't have any examples of stars that are exactly like our sun doing this, so we can only speculate and make informed guesses based on what we've seen other stars do, and based on our knowledge of nuclear physics about how fusion reactions can proceed. But then what will happen once there is not enough hydrogen in the core, and the core is still Earth-sized. This region is still an Earth-sized spot. But when there's not enough hydrogen anymore, the helium, for a relatively short period of time, is going to fuse into carbon. And it's really going to push, it's going to release a whole bunch of energy as it does that. And it'll definitely be greater than what was previously um, pushing out against gravitational collapse. And it's going to cause the star, our sun, to expand dramatically. This will probably be the size of Earth's orbit. Maybe bigger, maybe less. We're not exactly sure. We just know it's going to be big. This will be our red giant phase. Now this is the densities on the outer reaches. This will be very low density out here. We're talking densities that are far less than the densities in our upper atmosphere, but the temperatures will still be relatively high because the, part, the average particle speed will be fairly high, but the surface temperature will probably be around 3,000 Kelvin. This is in contrast to our surface temperature of about 6,000 Kelvin, 5,800 Kelvin, but just rounding to the nearest thousand. Maybe temperatures are going to be around 5,000 Kelvin here, maybe 4,000 Kelvin. These are extreme numbers, but just to give you the idea that the surface temperature is not going to be the same throughout all these processes. The surface temperature is going to change, which means our sun's spectral type actually is going to vary over these later stages in its life. And so once we finish the pulsating variable phase, we go to the red giant phase. Then what happens is we're just left with some carbon maybe some oxygen, maybe some of that helium was able to fuse to the carbon to form oxygen, and fusion will stop when we have too much carbon and oxygen there. We don't have enough mass overall to fuse that carbon into anything bigger. Our sun doesn't. And so this will be in the degenerate 
matter state. This is where it's maintained. I spell maintained right. By the electron degeneracy pressure. So we have this thing that's mostly carbon and oxygen atoms. It is still about Earth sized. And it has maybe 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 the original mass of our sun. Uh, again, very approximate numbers, but it's not going to have all the mass of our sun. Um, a lot of our sun has evaporated into space over the years. Um, the surface, there's nothing containing it there. Um, and a lot of it gets fused and becomes energy. Uh, but the, the overall chunk of the core is still going to be earth size. It's going to be pretty hefty and it's going to be very dense. And again, roughly 10 to the six times denser than water. Since there is no more fusion taking place, um, all these outer layers are going to eventually disperse. We have ultraviolet radiation, some gamma rays still, but mostly ultraviolet. We have a very hot core because it was fusing, um, but is no longer, but it's still, it doesn't cool off instantaneously. So that ultraviolet light pushes all the outer layers And they're going to be start to sort of not look spherical anymore as this happens. We're also not exactly sure what happens when the core locks into this degenerate matter state. So maybe there's a release in energy that causes a little kick that will keep pushing out all of the outer layers. But this is again the planetary nebula phase. And this is a very ephemeral phase. It doesn't last for long. It's that very pretty state, all those ring type nebula things. And then what's left over is just this carbon oxygen, earth sized white dwarf. And then it just sits there for the foreseeable future. So this is the overall process of what's going to happen uh, in our sun's future.